Hey there, parents of children in speech therapy for speech sound difficulties. It's Michelle here from speechtherapysupports.com. And today we are talking about speech activity routines for snack time and food prep. Now, if you're not sure what a speech activity routine is, just look back at the video where it's all explained. The time you spend preparing and even eating your snacks and meals has to be done every day anyway, so why not incorporate some speech practice into it? Really take a look at what you're doing, what parts of that routine your child can be involved in or is already involved in, and just notice them and say, hey, this is something we do every day. It's not going to take some extra time out of our day to do it. I'm just going to involve my child and we're going to make this our speech practice time. So as you see some of the examples of speech activity routines that I've come up with, think about your own life. Think about the things you prepare, the time of day that you're making snacks and when you're preparing your meals, and figure out what you want to do with your child. And then set a reminder to yourself so that you don't forget, whether you put it on your phone or you make a note and place it somewhere in the kitchen in a high traffic area that will remind you. Do something to remind yourself that this is what you plan to do at this time of the day. So you've committed to using this activity as a speech practice opportunity. So the next step is to look at that routine and identify the repeatable actions or steps for that routine. So it may be chopping and slicing the food into pieces. So the actual act of chop, chop, chopping will be the movement that you're going to use uh, as the repeatable action for that routine. Or maybe the food you're preparing involves dipping or the food that you're eating involves dipping. So for example, dipping veggies in dip or dipping fruit in yogurt or peanut butter. You may be rolling, so you might be rolling some chocolate balls in coconut. You may be mashing the potatoes or the turnips. You may be juicing um, some citrus fruit to make some fresh juice. Simply dumping ingredients into the batter can be repeatable action. And with that, you can break the actual ingredients up into smaller amounts so that there's more dumping of ingredients into that batter so that you have more opportunities for practice. Just putting every food item onto a plate, one item at a time, is a repetitive movement that you can use for speech practice. The actual movements of eating, biting, chewing, sipping, licking. When you're serving up the food at mealtime, every spoonful, every forkful, every scoop, every ladle can be used as an opportunity for speech practice. When all those little veggies are cut up, they can be dropped into the sauce one by one, and we can use that for speech practice. Every piece of food that you wash, that you scrub, that you dry can be used for speech practice, as well as any time that you're spreading something or decorating the food or garnishing it, dusting it with flour or sugar, all of those things can be used because they're repetitive movements and when you repeat a movement, you can always use that time for speech practice. And don't forget stirring, mixing, sifting, blending. What are the repeated movements that you do in your routines when you're cooking and preparing food? And here is where just a routine activity that you do with your child becomes speech practice. You add the speech turn. What are you going to say every time you perform that action of the routine or the step in the routine? So you might choose the word chop if you're working at word level on P at the end of words or CH at the beginning of words or CVC syllable shapes or lip closure or final consonants or lip rounding. So one word could work on a whole host of different targets. And again, the target is assigned by your child's SLP. You can run the words and phrases that you're thinking of by them first and then just start using them in your everyday routines. But for somebody else doing the exact same activity, they might be saying the word cut because their targets could be T at the end of words or K at the beginning of words, but they might also be working on CVC syllable shape and final consonants. Again, the targets can be different, but the activities can be exactly the same. 
Or we may be saying slice because we're working on S blends, or L blends, or S at the end of words, or final consonants, or clear S production to reduce a lisp. So many different options. Same activity. Here are some more examples of speech turns that work with different targets for snacking and mealtime prep. But I bet you can think of some more now for your particular targets and the way that you want to prepare snacks and meals in your house. Once you're at word level and beyond, it is easy to think of some little phrases. You just repeat the whole phrase instead of a word now. Or have your child use a full sentence if you're at that level. Always remember, speech turns must meet the criteria of the SLP assigned target for home practice. If you don't know what that is, check in with your child's SLP. They can be sounds by themselves, they can be syllables, words, phrases, or sentences. They should be repeated over and over again to get maximum reps so that you're actually getting some effective practice in and accuracy above all. If what your child is saying when, when you're practicing is not correct and doesn't sound like the target and you're correcting them most of the time because it's wrong, then you need to change the activity, you need to change your expectations, speak to your child's SLP and find out what you need to do, but don't continue to practice in those situations. Are you not sure if the speech turn that you're thinking about is right for the target that's been assigned to you by your child's SLP? Or possibly you can't think of a speech turn? Don't worry about it. It's the hardest part. It's just ask your child's SLP and I bet between the two of you, you can come up with a great speech turn for the activity that you want to complete with your child so that you get your speech practice done every week. My articulation tip sheets can be very helpful for figuring out the speech turn. If you want to learn more about those, the link is in the bio. They are available for many targets and that list is growing every week. And you can request specific targets uh, by emailing us. So the link is in the bio if you want to check those out and figure out if they might work for you for your speech practice at home. Always keep in mind that speech activity routines must be motivating and fun. That's why we're using your everyday activities to get your child engaged, keep them engaged. You must have opportunities to repeat, repeat, repeat. There has to be lots of times in there that your child is able to have an opportunity to practice their target. And that's why we're using the movements and steps of your routines so that you can get lots of repetitions in there. And accuracy above all, if what your child is saying does not quite sound right, or you're not sure that you're actually practicing the target that you've been assigned by your child's SLP, check in with your SLP. I'm sure that you can problem solve any difficulty that you're having in home practice to get you back on the road to having effective and consistent practice at home. And at Speech Therapy Supports, all we do is provide new ways for parents and SLPs to connect to help make effective speech practice happen at home. If this video helped you and you'd like to see more speech activity routine videos, please give us a like. That's how we'll know. And feel free to comment and tell us how to you use meal and snack prep to practice speech targets with your child. Or explore the links below to check out our other resources. See you next time!